Praise the Lord and good morning to everyone. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank God for another day. Uh, my computer is just not being, not cooperating with me this morning. We, we've all had those moments. We'll, <laughs> that sometimes these things act kind of funny when you when you don't want them to. <laughs> there you go. We give honor to the Spirit of Christ to our pastor and our first lady, um, Pastor Isaac and First Lady Isaac. To everyone mm -hmm. that's on Zoom this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank the Lord for um, just giving us an opportunity to do our Sunday school together on Zoom. We want to welcome everyone that's by way of uh, Facebook. We pray that you will, will be able to receive a blessing through the word of God. And our day's lesson is Jesus' prayer for his disciples. And for anyone that's on um, Facebook Live, if you want to follow with us, our lesson text today is John, the 17th chapter, verses 6 through 19. And at this time, we're going to, and while you're getting that ready, we're just going to ask if anyone um, have a prayer request. Uh, keep the Bailey family in prayer as we laid out. Uh, uh, my wife's niece, as we laid our niece to rest yesterday, as we had memorialized her yesterday, uh, keep my family in prayer, the Dodson family, PCCM ministry, <clears throat> Pastor and First Lady, Acadia, and our youth. I ask that you uh, keep missionary Pat in prayer. Um, also, uh, found out uh, yesterday, um, former co-worker of mine passed away. So keep the Nutter family in prayer. <clears throat> also, uh, Olivia Jones, uh, um, she's doing better from what I hear, but keep her in prayer. Um, it's also those, uh, you know, got two police officers in New York and Harlem. They got one of them, you know, got fatally, uh, you know, wounded, keep that family in prayer. And one that was in the hospital, keep them in prayer. Also, the uh, Magruder High School, you know, the shooting that took place there on uh, last week. Mm -hmm. Any other prayer requests? Can you uh, keep the un uh, pray for the unsaved portion of my family? Let us pray for bereavement for the Gross family. Also, keep the Wilford family in prayer. Um, any other prayer requests? Pastor, you continue to keep my family in prayer. Thank God for the prayers that have gone up before already for my daughter. She told me that she's feeling better. And we thank God for the healing of her body. Um, COVID may have us, but they don't have us down. So we praise God for that. Amen. Is there any more prayer requests before we go to prayer? Amen. We're going to go in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Lord Jesus, we thank you for giving us an opportunity to open up our mouths and lift up holy hands and to worship you. And God, we thank you for all things. And God, as we come into our Sunday school this morning, we ask that you will bless each and every one that is on Zoom or on Facebook. And God, all the prayers that have gone up, we ask that you will touch God. You heard every last prayer request God and we just ask that you will touch heal and deliver God we ask that you will have your way in their lives God we ask that you give strength to the Bailey family in the name of Jesus God we ask that you will continue to go with them lead and guide them God give them comfort in the time of their bereavement oh God and we thank you God for all things we ask you God to continue to pray for our pastor and our first lady we ask that you pray for our pastor that's bringing forth the word of God strengthen his body in the name of Jesus God we praise you oh God all the loved ones that we have petition up before you, God, in prayer that we have called out, God, the Jones, the Olivia, the um, Rose family, God, all the ones that I don't remember, God, but you heard it, Heavenly Father, and we ask that you would just touch and have your way in the name of Jesus. Touch those schools, God, that 
are, are seem to, enemy is trying to come in, God, police officer. God, we ask that you have your way. God, we know that none of these things have taken you by surprise, God, but you said whatsoever we ask in your name that you would do it. And God, we ask that you bring peace, God. We ask that you would bring healing in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. Go with us and stand by us while we do our Bible, um, our Sunday school this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to ask um, our deacon to do the Apostles' Creed. I believe I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, uh, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born under the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and, and buried. On the third day, he arose from the dead and ascended into heaven, and there he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from which he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our Apostles' Creed this morning. Okay. Our Sunday school text this morning is Jesus' prayer for his disciples. Our lesson text today is John the 17th chapter, verses 16 through 9, excuse me, verses 6 through 19. Our related scriptures is John 6, 35 through 40, John 17, verses 1 through 5, and St. John, verses 20 through 26, 17, 1 through 5, and then jumps down to verse 20 through 26. The time, A.D. 30, the place is Jerusalem. And our golden text today is they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And that comes from St. John, 17th chapter and the 16th verse. Um, our introduction, I'm going to, I know it's not in you, your guys' Bible, but I'm going to read something from the, the um, teacher's manual um, for the introduction on today, where it says that, have you ever asked someone to pray for you? Have you been hardened by the fact that Jesus is praying for you? It is also encouraging to know how he prays for us. John records the latest prayer of Jesus in the Bible. When he prayed the night before he was crucified in his prayer, in this prayer, he thanked the father for his disciples and asked him to strengthen them. He loved these men and sought God's protection for them. It is very special to see that in what was a very tense time in Jesus' life, he was thinking about his followers. He was not speaking his final evening in isolation. Instead, he was focused on the need of his disciples and glorifying his father. Jesus never lost sight of the fact that his mission was about redeeming people and saving those who love him. And that's what we're going to talk about um, in our Sunday school lesson, how Jesus prayed for his disciples. Um, our lesson um, aimed today is um, facts to study the manner in which Christ prayed for his death. Principles to know that we were never alone in this world because the Holy Spirit lives in us and Christ is praying for us to the Father. The application to live in full awareness that Christ goes with us when he needs us, when he sends us out. And we're going to learn today in our lesson that, you know, how Christ prayed for when he prayed for the disciples, he also was thinking about us. And he, you know, to this day, he's still praying for us, interceding for us. And we're going to learn that through the type of prayer that, that Jesus prayed for us. You know, and I, the lesson was saying how, um, you know, a lot of the prayers wasn't recorded um, that Jesus prayed. But this particular prayer was the prayer that was recorded for us to know that God was thinking about us. And uh, uh, although he was his disciples too, because they followed him, but the great thing to know that he didn't forget us, he didn't leave us out either. And that's what we're gonna learn in our lesson this morning. Um, our lesson outline um, 
we're going to read our scripture and then we'll go with our lesson outline. So if I have one, two, three, four so far, First Lady, are your pass available? Uh, she's not available, right? Okay. We, we have four people. She says she is available. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. My bad. Um, okay. Uh, we're going to ask everyone if they would take verse three verses and the last person will just read two. We'll ask Sister Alicia if she really read the last two verses. Um, Mother, Elder, um, Deacon, and Sister Alicia. Oh, First Lady, and then Sister Alicia. We can go in that order. What verses again, Elder Bostic for First Lady? Um, she's going to be uh, 14, 15, no. 15, 16, and 17. Well, the first one, I am? Yes, ma'am. Okay. John 17, <clears throat> verses 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me. Me take my glasses. Oh. And I gave it them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou have given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gave it me, and they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee and they have believed that thou did send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the, for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to, to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that, that they may be one as we are. While, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that, those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Now, and now come I to thee. And these things I speak in the world, that they might have my, jo my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and, and the word hath hated them, because they, have not, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. I pray not that thou showest, showest take them out of the world, but they that showeth keep them from the e from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sacrifice them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Want me to read? Just Alicia. Oh, sorry. Okay. 18, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Amen. Thank you all for the reading of the word. Um, our lesson outline today, uh, we have four of them. Uh, one of which is prayer for the faithful. That's found in John 17, verses 6 through 10. The second one is going to be prayer through for protection. John, uh, St. John 17, verses 11 through 12. The third outline is prayer for joy and perseverance. Um, pers Perservation? Preservation. Somebody help me with that one. I can't hear you, uh, Elder. I'm sorry. Yeah, that sounds right. Preservation. Pre per 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 preservation. 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 John, the 17th chapter, verses 3 
13 through 16. And our last outline is gonna be prayer for holiness. If we can get through to all of those today, it would be a blessing. And that's coming from St. John verses, um, the 17th chapter verses 17 through 19. Um, our verses by first, our first one is prayer for the faithful. And if I could get it, we're gonna go ahead and get started unless someone has a question. We're gonna go ahead and get started uh, regarding the gift of the father, if I could get a reader. As the chapter opens, we read that Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and prayed. This was the beginning of Christ's great intercessory prayer on behalf of his apostles and disciples. In praying this prayer, he was already undertaking the office of high priest. Christ manifested the Father's name to his disciples. He revealed the true character and nature of the Father to them. The people Jesus prayed for here are those whom the Father had given him. They came to him through faith, believing in the words he had spoke to them. They had also remained obedient to his words since they had begun following him. Here's uh, telling us about um, the intercessory prayer is where G Jesus prayed for his disciples, um, which is an example for us to pray for other people. And it says that, um, he had manifested the father's name to them during the, you know, the three years that he had been uh, teaching them that um, they believed his word, believed the word that he had told them. And what I really like about this, it says they also remained obedient to his words since they had begun following him. And that is a message for us also that you know, as we hear the word, we're supposed to remain obedient to the word, be doers of the word and not just hearers only. Absolutely. Well said, Mother. Um, anyone else have anything they would like to say or add to this? No, and, and uh, I don't know if it was in the, the student book, but in the teacher's book, it had right before that part, the mother just uh, quoted, it had, uh, they came to him through faith believing as he spoke to them um so you know that's that's what it's about uh it came to him through faith it said they have belonged to the father and through faith they now also belong to the son i highlighted that one as well anyone else and I also highlighted the one that mother said that they had also remained obedient to his word since they had begun following him you know that like she said it is so important that we must be obedient um, to the word of God as well. Um, there was, there was one thing, hello, someone was saying something. Um, the other thing that I had um, um, had looked at, it said that um, take God's name in vain um, is to disrespect God himself. So, you know, we have to be so careful that when we are um, praying, when we are witnessing to others that, you know, what we say out of our mouth is very important in how we say it. But, you know, to take God's name in vain is we're disrespecting God. It doesn't matter how angry we get in life. It doesn't matter what we go through, the trials that we go through. You know, we still have to be obedient um, to his word. And, you know, we're going to suffer persecution. We're going to suffer things. We're going to suffer hardship, but, you know, we still have, you know, once we have the word of God in us, we still have to know what to say out of our mouth and not, you know, take the Lord's name in vain. You know, God hasn't left us, nor he will forsake us, you know, and as we're going to find out in our lesson, and he's still praying for us. He's still, you know, um, interceding on our behalf. And thank you, Mother, for reading that. If I could get the next reader on our next one, it says a reception of his word. Yes, sir. Well, I was I was going to mention too uh, something else I had highlighted, and it, it, it's talking about um, it talked about the foundation of eternal life. Uh, 
uh, this is the foundation of eternal life is to know God the Father as he has revealed fully in, in person uh, of God, uh, God the Son. But the whole idea of knowing God through his son is a foreign concept to many people, says most think that they will go to heaven if they are good enough. However, they might def define that, uh, how, well, in other words, however they look at good, but good, good, uh, good enough can never be good enough to merit heaven. And I just thought that was uh, something that, that stood out. Awesome. People think being, you know, being being a good person is going to get them into heaven, but that's not good enough. Yeah, and you could have went on and read that other little sentence where it says, "Faith in Jesus alone is the way to the Father." You know, yeah. so. And it's funny they mentioned that they mentioned that script. They mentioned that twice. Yes. That paragraph they had the same thing again, and mm -hmm. and the, you know one of the same verses. So yeah, they they put an emphasis on that. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Man, good, good. Um, if there's no more questions, we're going to go with the next reception of his words. I can keep reading. Three years ago, I'm sorry, should I go? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. Some, some three years ago, Jesus had led the disciples to the conclusion that his words and deeds were from the Father. So I'm saying, I think just knowing that um, was talking about that um, Christ, we, we should be glorifying um, Christ. Paul said in, in, um, in my body, whether by life or death, and just saying that we should continue to um, glorify him. And I looked at the, um, the practical um Points. It says our relationship with the son rests in the father, giving us him. So I, is that saying that we should just continue to make sure we glorify God in all that we do? Amen. Amen. Reception of his words. Mm -hmm. Any other thing? Anyone else? Oh, we have a little bit more in a teacher's manual um, um, where it said the one thing that I had highlighted it says hearing the word of God is essential to coming to faith, you know, and that we must um, both believe the gospel and prove our faith by putting what we hear into practice, you know, that is very essential for us. Um, that uh, once we have come into the, the knowledge of Christ and believe on his word, it is essential that we prove our faith by putting what we hear into practice. We can't hold it. You know, we have to share this gospel. We have to share it. And we'll, we'll, a little bit, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but, you know, we, um, some people, once they get saved, you know, they just, that's it, you know, but that's not what our mission is. You know, our mission is to go out and say, you know, through our words to be able to save others. Um, Amen. That was one key thing that I had highlighted in. It had a lot in there. It, yeah. it was a lot in there. Yes, it was. It was. I, I like the part because that kind of piggybacks right off of what, what Mother was saying about the obedience, you know, mm -hmm. God's word and they were obedient, but, you know, they just didn't stop there. You know, they continued to uh, practice, you know, uh, what they heard. Um, so James, it talked about James saying, you know, be, do be endures of the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the part that kind of stood out to me also is to talk about the disciples. The disciples believed that Jesus had uh, been sent from the Father, but this did not mean that the apostles always understood everything Christ said. And it, it goes on to talk about the same is true for us. Although we do not yet understand all that we read in the Bible, we have to be willing to act on what we do understand and speak to, uh, to seek to grow on grace and the knowledge of, of Christ. So even though not always understand every scripture that we read, we still got to be obedient. We still got to seek seek a uh, uh, knowledge of it and grow in Christ. Um, but some people some people shy away from that because they don't understand the Bible, you know, or understand certain verses. They they just you know give up on it. But God will reveal it through through the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Amen.
absolutely. And it even said that sometimes the, the disciples didn't even understand, you know, but it didn't mean that they did stop reading or stop following him, you know. So, you know, that just lets them know we're human too. We're not going to fully understand, you know, everything, but as long as we just keep on seeking and growing grace, that we will understand it. My father will always say, we'll understand it better by and by. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else have anything you'd like to add to that? If not, we're going to go to our next one, which is glory through their faith. Glory through their faith, if I could get a reader. Jesus here speci uh, spec specifies the particular objects of his high priestly prayer. He is not praying for all people of the world without exceptions. His prayer is offered exclusively on behalf of those whom the Father has given him, given to him by faith. None of this should be taken to mean that God uh, has no con uh, concern for the world. Indeed, God loves all people, uh, all people of his creation, and his desire is that they come to the saving knowledge of Christ. The world that Jesus was not praying for was a world that is opposed to God and his redemptive plan to save sinners through faith in Jesus Christ. In this regard, we too are to love the world since that, since that world reveals a lack of love uh, for God indeed, the world, the, the whole world, life and wickedness. Those who be, belong to uh, Jesus also belong to the Father and vice versa that being so, Christ is glorified in them. This is still true today. Our steadfast faith in Christ glorifies both Jesus and the Father, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God have before ordained that we should walk in them. And that's kind of self-explanatory that, you know, we, we got to understand that, you know, just as we pray, as Jesus prayed for the world, for those that come to Christ, we should be praying for them also. Um, because in God's creation, um, you know, God loves all, you know, the Bible says God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten son. So, you know, and the Bible says God's will is not that any shall perish, but all come to repentance. So, um, as I say, that the world that Jesus was uh, was not praying for was those that would, that, that was opposed to God and his redemptive plan to save us. Amen. Amen. Uh, <laughs> Anyone else? Amen. It's like you said, that was self-explanatory and that was good, good, good. If not, we're going to go to our second outline, which is prayer for protection. And if I could get a reader. Although he was physically still in the world, in a real sense, Jesus could declare, I am no more in the world. Since Jesus would be taken from them, it was appropriate that, that he prayed for the disciples' welfare in his absence. It is important that the apostles remain unified in their, in their testimony and their mission. They all share a single, a single Lord and a single mission. Later in his prayer, Jesus prayed specifically for those who would come to believe through the testimony of the apostles. He prayed that they also would be unified so they so that succeeding generations might likewise believe their testimony about him. Mentioning Jesus' prayer was the son of perdition, a reference to Judas Issachar. The word perdition include, includes concepts such as destruction, damnation, and hell itself. The term conveys the truth that Judas was sent by Satan and was doomed to perdition for his betrayal of Christ as has been prophesied. <clears throat> yeah, uh, uh, from what I'm getting out of here at the beginning, like I say, uh, Jesus know, like I say, that he would he would depart, but his mission is still to go around and spread the word. You know that that his apostles continue, even though they might be perfectly praying for their protection, they still go around and do the mission of you no know, of seeking salvation. You know, for the sinner man, the sinner woman. So his prayer for protection, because he knew that they was going that that we all are going to go through things that of course that believes in them. So he's praying for you no know, uh, that they will continue to do continue to do his work, and you know, and praying for protection within them, keep them covered. Amen. 
Anyone else like to add to that? Absolutely. Uh, it was it was a part it was part of it was in the in the in uh, the student book but in the teacher's book it kind of uh, piggyback a little bit more and I thought that was very important about uh, uh, the apostles remain unified in their mm -hmm. testimony and their mission their testimony and their mission and and it, in the, in the student in the teacher's book it mentioned that sadly Christians often do not present a united testimony to the world and, uh, it talked about their profession for Christ and how we kind of debate about doctrine, but it goes a little further than that. You know, it, it talks about, you know, we, we, could, we can have a South Bowl, but even among those who hold to these teachings, they often remain, pe uh, remain petty disputes, power struggles, and unchristian attitudes. And it says, we always do great harm to the testimony of Christ in the eyes of the world when we are not a, a, a long among, when we are not along among ourselves so when you know it, we can have petty disputes and, and and arguments and stuff like that over it ain't got to be doctrine it could be over other stuff and when the world sees that we lose our testimony for christ because hey that's what a christian they supposed to be christians so you know that that's what stood out to me you know you know uh, remaining united as born again believers we we have to you know you know we we can uh, and pastor i think mentioned it last Sunday or the other day, we was talking about, you know, we can, we can be, we can disagree to disagree, but we don't have to be, you know, discreet yeah. and, and, and make a big uh, a mountain out of a molehill over, especially in front of the world. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Read in, in what he was just talking about, even in uh, First Corinthians, I think it's 110, where Paul says, I beseech you now, brethren, talking about the saints of God, that mm -hmm. you present yourself, uh, you know, uh, holy, a living sacrifice, and how that we supposed to be unity of one mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, one mind, and that we all should be speaking the same thing. And it's very important because it says for the succeeding generations, mm -hmm. God Word has to go forth and we're mm -hmm. responsible. And like I said, we, we all got to speak the same thing if we Christians. Amen. Amen. Perfectly joined together. Yeah, in one man. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. And everything y'all said, I had highlighted, especially the one where I would think it was Elder was talking about the unity. You know, it's so important that you know, this is how we win souls to Christ, that if we're not unified, if we're not together, you know, if we're not, you know, um, just like you say, we're not going to always agree on everything, but we don't have to be disagreeable, you Amen. know, um, but it's, it's so important that when new people come into Christ or come into, um, you know, our sanctuary or into any church, that they see that we are a unified church. That we are together, we're all on one accord. It is so important. But if they see the division among us, you know, then we're not drawing them to Christ. You know, they're going to go somewhere else and seek um, what their needs are. And I, I have always said that how important it is, um, even within our family. You know, we have to be unified. You know, our families are so divided now because you know so many things that have happened. They're still holding on to things that you know you really have to let go of. I mean, what's the purpose of, you know, but if we bring it, spill it into the body of Christ and spill it into the church, then, you know, we're not together. We're not unified. We are still divided, you know, and the only way that we can become unified is through the Holy Spirit. You know, we have to allow Christ to be in our lives in order for us to be able to be unified and have the faith to believe, trust in God's word. You know, this is basically what the Sunday school is, you know, telling us that, you know, the prayers that um, Jesus was praying or God was praying is that, you know, that we stay within each other, you know, because of the word that we have received the word of God and we have faith in the word of God that, you know, this is how we be able to go out and witness to others. Um, um, it was saying that he prayed that they also would be unified um, about their testimony, you know, even our testimonies that we have, 
um, have to be, you know, accurate, you know, with strength and power, not sad testimonies, you know, glorious testimonies of the things that God, is, how he saved us, how we came to acknowledge him, how to get to know him, you know. And this is a good lesson this morning because it teaches us that the same prayer that Jesus prayed for his disciples, he prayed for us, is like someone that's already said, we have to pray the same prayer, you know. If we don't know what to pray for, we definitely will know what to pray for after this lesson today, mm -hmm. you know, and not be selfish. That's the other thing that I had picked up in the lesson today is that, you know, Jesus wasn't selfish. You know, he thought about his disciples. He was concerned about them, you know, so that's the same we have to be. We have to be concerned about our brothers and sisters, those that are not to say, you know, and pray for them. So, you know, that, you know, the lesson within itself. And then I had thought about what we were teaching on um, um, Bible study that Elder Milton had taught about the types of prayers or how to pray, you know, um, you know, within an hour's prayer, you know, what to pray for. It wasn't always, Lord, can you pray for me? I need this. Lord, can you pray for me? Or I need this God. You know, we have to learn to pray ye one for another, you know, so, you know, lesson. I got a lot of the lesson today, but I did get a lot of the lesson. I mean, the Bible study too, as well as the prayers, you know, and prayers can't be selfish. Yeah. That's what kind of stood out to me, because even in the midst of what he was facing, he was thinking about his disciples. Yes. Mm -hmm. He had to go to the cross. And it just, you know, it's like um, when I was talking about Wednesday night, you know, intercession came before a petition. Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, all of the other stuff about what we need, God going to take care of that anyway. Yeah. Make our petition known unto him. But there's so much more that, that's 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 important that we need to pray about also. And Jesus, in this point, like I said, unselfishly saying, hey, look, the Father, you know, I'm praying that you keep my disciples, that you watch over them, you protect them, because they, they are, you know, these are who you gave me. And he was more concerned about them, even though that they were going to face persecution. He said, I don't want to get too far into the lesson, but talk right. about <laughs> but, yes. But, and it wasn't even about him. It was about. Nope. The Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Good, 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 good. Listen. Okay, we're going to our third outline, which is prayer for joy and preservation. Preservation. I think it is pre P R. Preservation. Um, Dory, aim, aim at hatred, if I could get a reader for that. Knowing that his time of the earth was now limited, Jesus prayed that his disciples would be um, experience, uh, experiencing joy because Christ had given the apostles his word that the world hated them because they were not of the world mm. so, mm. <laughs> so it was saying that um jesus um gave us um over to um the father mainly you know for safekeeping and, and letting us know that you know praying i'm, well, I'm gonna say praying for others to me and it went back to intercessory prayer God's already going to take care of us. We just got to continue to steadfast and um, continue to lean on his word is, is pretty much um, some of what I've gotten out of this. So, Amen. so once Amen. On it. Amen. Anyone else? Yeah, I was, uh, and I, you might have it underlined too in your book, but it, it talked about joy can indeed mm -hmm. be Midst of sorrow and conflict. And this was kind of stood out to me because it's so true that it says, but the opposite emotions usually overwhelm us instead because we tend to focus on our own pain and circumstances instead of focusing on the joy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. He says that, you know, um, I think it was a last Sunday or the Sunday before last when a woman is in travail, you know, she's in pain for just a little bit, but then once the baby is here, you know, she forgets all about that. You know, I thought about that when I read this part, you know, that, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to experience um, 
you know, they aim at hatred. But, you know, in the end, when we get the victory, that's where our joy comes from. And it was saying that when Jesus taught his disciples, he was giving them God's word. The Holy Spirit could enable them to remember these things later. And that's where I thought about the women in travail, you know, that, um, you know, the Holy Spirit is going to just bring calmness, joy, everything, you know, whatever they go through, whatever we go through, you know, the Holy Spirit is our comforter, you know, so um, it'll enable them to remember the things later, remember the things, remember, remember the good things of the word of God, remember what God said, that he will never leave us nor forsake us, we have to think positive that, um, you know, even when we are hated or, or, you know, someone has shown some aim of hatred towards us. We have to think on the goodness of Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, because we know that we're, we have Christ in our life. We don't have to fight physically, fight. You know, we don't even have to fight, you know, negatively through the spirit. You know, God's word will bring everything within us. Amen. I was, I was thinking, like you said, you know, in, in the midst of our circumstances, or, or pain that we're going through, if if we know that God has given us the victory, can't we get excited about it instead of focusing on the pain and the circumstance? Just get excited exactly. about what God is what God has prepared at the end of it. You know, um, that's that's that that'll be awesome. <laughs> and it was saying that we're we're going to experience pain. We're yeah. going to experience it, but it's not that it's going to stay there. You know, we're going to be able to going to be lifted and we're going to get some joy we're going to get some relief we're going to get you know the good part of it you know mm -hmm. so it, it doesn't i guess the song says trouble don't last always you mm -hmm. know so we mm -hmm. will you know it may hurt for a little bit you That's know right. but well, the joy is going to come in the morning mm -hmm. as the scripture says mm -hmm. so you know and, and you know you think about like a wound that 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 it, it it shows the blood, but then mm -hmm. all of a sudden that skin comes right back to mm -hmm. you know like nothing ever happens. So I yeah, yeah. You remember how it hurt it, but when we right. start seeing the healing part, we're glad. That's right. What is this, Sister Alicia? Why don't kill you make you stronger? Don't kill you make you stronger. You want to elaborate on that a little bit, Sister Alicia? Whatever you're going through and it hasn't killed you, it, it only makes you stronger. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. 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 We don't have anything else to add to during the aim of hatred. We're going to our last, and we're doing good. We're going to our last outline, which is prayer for holiness set apart by the word if we could get a reader for that sorry do we do we do uh in but not uh in oh but no 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 we did not in but not of the world. the world i'm sorry okay thank you while we might think that the way to protect his disciples would be to shelter them from the world that is not what the lord desires it is detrimental to the Great Commission to isolate believers from society at large on a long-term basis. It is only as we interact and communicate with the people of the world that we can be effective witnesses for Jesus. Jesus did pray that the disciples be kept from evil. The disciples needed to be protected from the deception tactics of Satan. After all, their writings were to become the foundation of the church. Jesus was praying that the Holy Spirit would miraculously protect them so that they could complete their legacy of the inspired scriptures. Mm. Yeah, what I just want to say on this, even though we are in the world, but not of the world we still have to um socialize with the world we can't just hide ourselves away because how the gospel gonna get out if we don't get out there so god jesus has already prayed for our protection you know while we you know go forth and carry out the gospel 
So I just want to uh, say that, you know, we can't light a candle and put it on the bushel. We mm -hmm. have to let our light shine before others. Amen. That is so true, Mother. It's so true. Um, it said throughout church history, there have been those who felt that the best way to deal with the world and its allurement was to remove themselves from society. Now, I'm just going to put my little testimony out there that when I was coming to Christ um, and I got saved and I got saved at a young age, um, our teaching was that we couldn't do things of the world. We couldn't go roller skating. We couldn't go to movies. We couldn't do anything because, you know, we could have been easily tempted by Satan um, to go back out in the world. Um, Sometimes I look at it as being overprotective, but just like you were saying, Mother, that how we become witnesses, if we're going to hide behind the four walls, you know, right. we don't witness, we can't witness to one another unless you know, we know that we're able to go out and witness to others. So I always thought about that, you know, when I was reading this, how, you know, we were isolated, you know, a lot of things we couldn't do. All we could do is come to church. You know, all we could do is come and sometimes church was eight o'clock, 12 o'clock, six o'clock, maybe eight o'clock, you know, uh, that's where, you know, we were, you know, coming up young, you know, babes in Christ. But, you know, as we listen to this and but not the world, you know, we're in the world, you know, we're walking amongst the world now, but we have to be able to know what um, to rightly divide, you know, what's good and what's bad, you know, what's for us and what's not for us, you know, and we still have to witness, we still, how are we going to draw people to Christ if we're, you know, not in the world, you know, and we're not so much quoted in the world, in the world, you know, it's just the world is amongst us, you know, people are amongst us. So, you know, we have to, you know, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in, that it will lead and guide us into all truth. And it will also give us um, a way to be able to witness without, you know, falling into sin. And if we do, you know, fall into sin, through the word of God, we know how to go to God, you know, and and talk to him and ask him to help us where we are weak at and strengthen us where we are strong. But I just thought about it, got a little tickle. Well, for sure, you weren't going to go to the um, the movies or rape a roller skating ring on Sundays mm -hmm. you didn't get out till Monday morning on, uh, oh. from Sunday. So you, you definitely wasn't going on on Sunday. But yeah, that that's so true. And um. And saying you can't go to the movies, you can't do this, you can't do um, certain things. But through it all, like you said, how do we get out and um, witness if we stand in the four walls? I mean, and, and, it, and that's true because even when my daughter has started playing basketball, you know, a lot of times when you play AAU, um, a lot of the games were on Sunday. So, <laughs> At a certain time, I would get up, tell my daughter, come on, let's go. So we can go. We go. We went to church first, you know, and boy, did I get some backlash from my father and did I get, you know, I'm going to hell and all of that stuff, you know. But while I was at the games, I was witnessing to people, you know, people knew I was I had left church to come so my daughter can play basketball, you know. So I felt I was letting my light shine. I held, you know, my own, you know, when people... People will come to me and say, can you pray for me? Or what church do you go to? Can mm -hmm. I come to your church? So I felt that, you know, even though I did go to church, but I took my daughter to her games, I was still able to witness to the world. But see, I can talk about my father. It was my father. My father didn't understand those things, you know. He didn't understand that. And then when one time I had the whole team, they were, we were going to New Orleans or something to play in a tournament. I had the whole team come to the church so my father could pray for them. So I was witnessing to the unsaved world, you know, and for them to want to come to the church and be prayed for, for protection, you know, I'm not saying they all got saved, but their hearts was in the place where they want to receive prayer in the word. And, you know, that's what I had to teach my father, look, 
you know this is how we witness to other people this is how other people come to christ this is how we get new members is mm -hmm. we, we can't sit in church all you know all day long and not witness the people you know we can pray you know but we have to go on the outside that's where we're needed at we're not needed on the inside yeah. you know i i had to chuckle too first lady because boy boy Amen. boy when you know i was going through that you know about the world and not keeping ourselves excluded from the world we have to use wisdom with that and it, it even said that in the lesson how we have to use witness when we witness to other people amen yeah you're right about that i, I will do that thing with jr with the uh, wild bowl championships aau and yeah. got up you know the games wasn't until a certain time so we went to church first and then after that, you know but uh again you know you you, you can't just you know, take your light and hide it on the bushel. You know, we got to get outside the four walls, you know, and, and it's not about, like you said, you know, even though we still dressed in our church attire, <laughs> people kind of know you in the church, but it's about being a witness for Christ, you mm -hmm. know, uh, but you still got to support your family. So, so I've been Amen. through that. Amen. Oh, I wasn't alone. Huh? <laughs> we got one more paragraph and we got maybe about three more minutes. If we can get through the last one, prayer for holiness set apart by the, oh, we got two more. If, uh, if we just do the one set apart by the world, we can get a reader. Um, and then we'll go ahead and close out Sunday still. <clears throat> so prayer for holiness set apart by the word the word sanctify means to be made holy, to be set apart for a holy purpose. The words holy and saint derive from the same root word. Sanctification is mainly a progressive process that begins after conversation and continues throughout our lives. While we usually think of God's word in its written form in the Bible, these men had been given God's word directly from the mouth of the son of God himself. Some of them would actually be instrumental in penning the words we have in our New Testament. Set apart for a mission, a theme running throughout the gospel of John affirms that Christ was sent by the Father. The apostles themselves were about to be sent into a hostile world to carry on the mission and ministry of Christ. For the sake of his disciples, Christ sanctified himself to complete his divine mission. He did this so that his apostles in turn would be sanctified to carry on his mission. And amen. Thank you for reading both of those set apart um, by the word and set apart mission. Amen. We thank God today for our Sunday school lesson on Jesus' prayer for his disciples. We thank you on Facebook Live. We thank you for participating on Zoom this morning. And at 11 o'clock, um, we, we will be in our sanctuary. Um, and the address is 4516. Beach Road. Beach Road, Temple Hills, mm -hmm. Maryland. I said, I don't have the address down good, but I do know how to get there. We want to come down the Beltway. <laughs> no, seriously, we praise God. And we'd like to know if anyone would want to give on this morning to our Sunday school. Uh, you do have the opportunity to give through Give or Find. We praise God for all things. Um, and at 11 o'clock, uh, we are practicing safe um, distancing through our CDC process and procedures, uh, 11 o'clock, our pastor will be bringing the word of God and we praise God. We're anxious to get into this, the sanctuary to hear what that says the Lord. And um, we um, pray that each and every one will have a blessed day. And we're gonna ask our digging if he will close us out. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for, for reproof, for correction and righteousness, that the man of God may be may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. God Amen. bless you. God bless everyone. Y'all.